Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with the second video for the standard 8-man that I joined with Jun Dredge. Uh, and I'm going to just do one more video as one of the matches didn't record, plus the finals was incredibly fast as I did have the nuts both game. So anyway, this is this is round number two in the 8-man versus Dead 2, and I don't know if this guy is significant or not. He's got a little web page here, so I'm thinking that might... He does a Twitter, Ricky Kebi Cabrero. Anyone knows who that is? If it's anyone significant, let me know. Because it kind of makes me feel good when I beat actually good players. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and play this. And I believe that I won the die roll on this one. Yeah, I did. And this hand was a very keepable hand. Again, we have the Night Howler, a Grizzly Salvage, a Gore Clan Rampager, Nemesis Immortals, and a Flesh Blood. I really can't think of a more nutty hand, except maybe this be a... Well, Grizzly Salvage is fine here, too. Sometimes I prefer the the Seder Wayfinder. Sometimes I prefer the Grizzly Salvage. But I think a lot Latrol would have made this hand better than than a Blood in hand. I'm not sure. It's This is about as godlike of a hand as you can... Uh, Imagine now I'm playing too much Dota 2. I'm now I'm saying godlike. Uh, anyway, Temple of Enlightenment. So I'm thinking, ah, oh, great. I got to go up against another grindy Esper match. But this is an interesting deck. This is actually going to be the Mono Blue Devotion Splash Aphera and Detention Sphere. And this is making a ton of waves in the Magic the Gathering Online community. It has already gone seven and zero by uh, Soku. Soku's an amazing player. I think he's ranked number one. He always bounces between in the top five of the rankings. And I believe he's Brazilian as well. I'm not quite sure on that. But if he's if he's playing it, if he's playing it to this caliber, then it, it is a legit deck. And you'll see, I've played this matchup and it has wrecked me before when it gets his god draw. And Farah is extremely good in this deck as it it has great synergy with rapid hybridization again there's another god that you can target that's indestructible and it also it, it gets turned on quite easily with like night specters and tidebinder mages and and so you go for like first turn uh judges familiar second turn tidebinder mage third turn night specter and if is active on turn four and not only that you're drawing cards as well it's it's extremely powerful with again rapid hybridization if you use it on your opponent's turn on one of your own creatures or on one of your, yeah your indestructible dude to get a three three or one of your own creatures that's you chump block with you're gonna be drawing a card on your turn and then whenever you cast a car a creature spell um on your turn you're going to draw a card on your opponent's turn just one one per turn but still a ferret is incredibly powerful in the mono blue devotion list it gives it so much more reach against control and mono black devotion which were which were the two hard matchups for the the mono blue devotion now with this kind of spin and especially access to detention sphere i really feel that this is the most powerful deck in standard i'm not going to play it's not my play style personally i'm not a big fan of mono blue devotion and nothing against the deck it's just I'm a rogue deck builder. We'll just put it that way. I'm not going to be playing something so tier one as this. I like to, to express my creativity through my deck building. And maybe that will cost me some games. But I'm, I'm sure that... We, I've had this discussion with a lot of other people about Conley Woods. Conley Woods is, is a lot like me. And he has top aided many things. And he's done just some crazy, crazy achievements. And he does it while playing rogue decks. And I'm, I am under the impression if Conley Woods were to play more... Uh, fine-tuned decks he would be he would have a lot more higher finishes and but I that just gives me more respect for the guy that he goes out and brews his own decks and plays them and maybe that is his advantage is that no one ever knows what he's playing and they just overthink the matchup and whatnot so who knows but anyway if, if I were to recommend a deck to be playing at a PTQ it's definitely this blue white devotion it is so powerful anyway we'll get back to the 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 deck I will quit blabbing so anyway he gets his tie butter mage but has to tap down a, a wayfinder which i'm cool with that and the wayfinder found one creature in the graveyard so we can't get that awesome nemesis of mortals again if if this finds a land and three creatures you can cast it on turn two for exactly three mana and three mana for a five five is is really good in this format so anyway, Seder Wife, I decided to go Seder Wayfinder number two, and it finds another land and puts a Night Hell and a Lot of the Troll in the bin. Not too excited about that because I wanted the Lot of the Troll, but again, this, this is going to make this Night Howler and this Nemesis Immortals plus Blood lethal. So again, I can scry away, and I didn't see what that was. Sorry about that. And he's going to attack, and I'm going to go to an 18. I could have blocked there and actually put it in the graveyard. That might have actually been the right play. But I'm going to go ahead here. I could go Lifebane Zombie as well. 
and actually go for this unblockable threat with the Night Howler. But what do I decide to do here? I think it's just Nemesis of Mortals. No, I Grizzly Salvage to try to find a land, and it didn't work out for me. So I was kind of kicking myself here because I wanted a land that came into play untapped. So it had to be a Stomping Grounds or a Forest for me to cast that Nemesis of Mortals. So risky play ends up ends up hurting me. Oh, no, no, I had an Overgrown Tomb. Never mind. Excuse me uh, with this. I, I should watch my replays again before I commentate on them. Uh, so I get the Nemesis of Mortals. And this is going to be really, really good. Probably should have attacked in there because here we go again. He puts out, I believe, another Tidebinder Mage. Yeah, and taps down. And that allows him to swing in for seven, which has got me on a clock, especially since he can make his guys, his uh, all of his guys unblockable. So here's about the most terrible Seder Wayfinder ever when I'm trying to get creatures in my graveyard. As we get another land... But at least we get that string of lands out of the way. And here we go. This, I decide to use my blood. Even though blood was like a huge kill, I decide that I need to get that Tidebinder Mage off so this thing can untap and actually start being a threat again. So that's what I decide to do. And he scries here. And he's got five mana. He puts out a Night Veil Spectre. So Thos is active again. And he decides not to attack him because he doesn't want some sort of crazy Gorkland Rampage or Nemesis of Mortals combo. Apparently, he's seen decks like this, but he puts out a Frostburn Weird, so he is looking very good with Devotion. But we do draw into that Shadowborn Demon, which I am able to cast to kill off his Night Veil Spectre. And again, no point attacking in at this, at this point. And that keeps him off the Devotion. That keeps him off of of anything but a shrine he needed a, to draw a shrine here and then a shrine would add him would add him five mana then he could get everything unblockable and pump his frostburn weird and kill me but without a shrine i'm pretty much sitting pretty here and he decides to make thassa unblockable and put me down into a a warrington turn kill but i'm i'm pretty good here it's a master waves i don't care about a master waves too much because i have an unblockable flyer and i just do the math here and I believe I can Night Howler onto my Shadowborn Demon, which makes him a 13-13. And then I can play this Overgrown Tomb. And then I believe, like, the way he'd survive this, he'd have to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in front of the Nemesis of Mortals. He would have to block the Seder Wayfinder still. Uh, so actually, Frostburn Weird would be the right block in, in, in front of the Nemesis of Mortals. And then... He'd still, because I would only have to do, and then throw throw the Tidebinder Mage in front of a Seder Wayfinder, throw a Elemental in front of a Seder Wayfinder, and then, yeah, he would have been okay if he would have blocked with more of these. But he's thinking that I'm just trying to go for a monstrosity, but I've got the Gorkland Rampager. I think he still does need to play around the, the Gorkland Rampager, because the, the Gorkland Rampager is just one damage off with the shadow going on to the Shadowborn Demon, because that would make it a, a 17, and then a one more creature card in my graveyard to make it 18, and he'd be down to a 1. And so he'd have to throw a ton in front of this, this Nemesis of Mortals, which might take Thassa off of Devotion, but I mean, he ends up making the wrong play here and actually giving me this win, but he doesn't know that. I could have something else in my hand that, that could have actually won this. But anyway, what, I, what he ended up doing is just blocking with two guys, Three guys, yeah. And then I was able to gore, Rampager the Nemesis of Mortals and get in there for that last bit of damage. So it's, this would have put it up to a nine. Could he have even blocked? He blocked two more there. Three more could have gone on there. I think he could have survived, but it would have been by losing. He would have had to lose like his Frostburn Weird and his Master, possibly. I don't know. I'm thinking he could have actually won that game, but of course he didn't know exactly what I had in my, my hand. There could have been plenty of things in my hand that... Uh, could have won, won the game there. Anyway, we will go on to the next match or the next game. And here I am on the, the draw, of course. And this, here we go, another God Hand. And I'm not sure what the... the oh, I know why the, the Godless Shrines are in here. Godless Shrines are in here to give you a white source that can actually cast Night Veil Spectre. So that's why they, they play them. Don't know how I feel about that. I'm wondering if just like a Azorius Guild Gate would be better. So anyway, I'm in a Deathrite Shaman. And the Judge's Familiar is a bit of a pain in the butt. As it's going to make me have one more card or one more mana to cast a Golgari Charm safely. 
And Seder Wayfinder here finds a great, see here, here it goes again. It finds one land, puts three creatures in the graveyard, which is the ideal, what you see with it. And I decide to tack in, but I'm down to 17. And I did have to shock myself twice, so I'm I'm definitely behind here. And Ty Binder Mage chooses to tap down the Deathrite Shaman. So he's going to tack in with the Judge's Familiar. And still can't deal with that Ty Binder Mage. But I've got some decent scry here. Decide to tack in. He knows I've got the Gore Clan now. That probably wasn't the best tack in. And we put a Grizzly Salvage on top, and I decided to cast a lot literal. But he does have the Detention Sphere for the Law Latrol. The problem with running like Detention Spheres in this deck is it kind of puts him down a creature that makes the mono blue less aggro than a lot of times it wants to be, especially facing another aggro match. But Law Latrol is a difficult card for him to deal with. Of course, ideal would, ideally would have been another Tie Binder Mage to just tap that thing down. But Law Latrol also is my engine to throwing unnecessary creatures in my graveyard. So that was a pretty good play. And here I was going to Grizzly Salvage, or not Grizzly Salvage, Golgari Charm, uh, sweep two things. and But I decide not to. And hope that he has a Master of Waves. And just go for the blowout here. And I decided to put a Flesh Blood on top. Definitely a great card. So here we go. Master of Waves. So this is what's so cool about Master of Waves. On the stack where the Evolve goes. Whoa, slow down there, replay. On the stack, before the Cloudfin Raptor evolves, I'm able to Golgari Charm. And then it kills the Master of Waves. So then when the t and, and kills the Cloudfin Raptor. So then when the the tokens come in, they're they're one zeros, and so the, then they die. And then of course the Tie Binder Mage is now down to a one one, which attacks in for one, and we get a Flesh Blood here. But I decide just to cast a Gore Clan Rampage. He's down to one card in hand, and off the top he does draw a Detention Sphere. So he's going to try this beat down strategy with Tie Binder Mage and Mutavault. And I still do need to draw into a land. But I mean, the graveyard is pretty full. I could go Night Haller here, but again, I'm going to go for the kill with a Gore Clan Rampager. And I decide just to blood off his Tie Binder Mage. And he scoops here. He doesn't need to scoop here. He can actually get out of this by drawing into a Master of Waves. Master of Waves will add him three tokens and really puts me on a, a clock because I blood the Tie Binder Mage and I attack him for four. He's down to a 12. And then I don't even know if I attack it at this moment because he could mute a vault and, and hit me. So he should have played this out. He should have allowed himself one more draw to draw a Master of Waves. Cause, or did he scry? Okay, he knew what was on, the, on top. So maybe, maybe he knew whatever it was on top wasn't going to do it. But again, he's still at a healthy 16. He, ha he has a couple of turns to really get out of this. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in the graveyard. No, he'd be dead next turn to a bestowed Night Howler. Yeah, he could still block the Muta Vault. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand the concession there. Anyway, so in this one, I'm not going to do another video for the next one. But anyway, the, the last matchup here is against uh, Jay Bud. And if anyone knows who Jay Bud is, that is Cedric Phillips of, of Star City Games. He used to work for Star City Games. I believe he's working for Magic the Gathering event coverage now. Or he was. I'm not quite sure exactly what he was, or what his official title is now, or what he's exactly doing. He's a, he's a very popular Twitcher. He, he does Twitch, he has his own Twitch channel on, and I was hoping he was Twitching this one, but apparently he wasn't. It doesn't, it doesn't appear, I looked at his Twitch channel, it doesn't appear like he's Twitched in, in, a, in a bit, in a few months. But anywho, this again is a very good hand. This is actually game number three. What happened in game number one is he molded, mulliganed to five, and I had a lot with troll, a two mana, Two mana, a lot literal, and three other creatures. And then I drew into a Night Howler or a Blood. No, I drew into a Blood. And I decided just to go the route to ditch everything to Lot Latrol. So on 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 uh, turn three, I unloaded my entire hand, four creatures to Lot Latrol, put it up to a six five, attacked in for six, and I believe he shocked himself for a Sylvan Carrotid as well. So he went down to a twelve. From that, and then again, I attacked him with Lot Latrol. He did not block, and then I blooded him. So it was a, a very, very quick match. I believe it was a turn five kill with Lot Latrol and blood. And it is a very, is a, it is a bit risky doing that with Lot Latrol, but knowing against this matchup, he's playing the, um, the GR Devotion deck. It's not quite monsters because it uses all the Planeswalkers. I believe that's the list he's using, and it uses Garuk. 
and Xenagos and Domri, and then they they just try to get an incredible amount of devotion through burning tremissaries and Seder wayf or Seder, the one that uh, Seder voy voyaging Seder, the one that untaps the land, and just get crazy card advantage through Garuk. Anyway, we'll get this this match started here. This was game number two, and he I'm on top, he's on bottom. By the way, so he temples here, and I temple as well, and I keep a temple on top. So I'm a little bit of a slow of a hand. But I'm okay with that versus monsters. He burning tree emissaries, but the one time burning tree emissary doesn't have a sylvan character or a voy voyaging satyr or even elvish mystic, so that's pretty awesome. So I'm thinking he's got a lot of removal in his hand. So again, I just temple of abandon. I find a lot of the troll on top, and I do keep it on top. Let's see, puts in his battle puts on top. Yeah, I believe I, it was a lot of the troll. We'll see here. So here I'll just cast a life main zombie, and we will find this hand full of goodies. So, 4 mana, 4 mana, 5 mana, 4 mana. I don't know why he brought in Nidalee's Disciple versus me. I, I'm not the biggest aggro deck where you need to stabilize early. I'm going to go for this all-out one-turn swing kill you for usually over damage, if anything. Like, I've done, like, easily 40 damage in a turn with this deck before. So, Nidalee's Disciple, I probably wouldn't rec recommend bringing in. But I see double Plukronos. So, one of these is going to be a dead card if he has to cast it. And with my hand, too... I can just go over the top of it. And so the, the, the right card to take is this Corsair of Crufix, as it will give him card advantage, filter through his deck, and gain, gain him life. So I do take the Corsair of Crufix. The one bad thing about the, the uh, Lightning Zombie that does not put in the graveyard, it exiles it, which is a good thing and a bad thing. But in my deck, I'd want it in the graveyard. Anyway, so on to his turn. He decides to attack in. Now... I would I make this trade any day of the week against devotion based decks. He needs to draw a shrine, and a shrine is is pretty pretty dead without any devotion on board. So I'm going to go ahead and, and block, make this block of the burning tramissary. And and also it puts two creature cards in my graveyard. Yes, I could go down go for a beat down strategy by, uh, you know, putting out a night howler on on my life bane zombie and trying to get there that way. But I saw, I got the Law Latrol. That's a much better target to put it on. And we will cast it here. We will cast the, the Law Latrol and leave up regen mana. So here he's going to throw out his... No, he misses his land drop. So good thing I did take the Corsair Crew fix. Now here I make a little bit of a play mistake. I probably should have just casted a J Jared Lich Lord, but I decided to ditch it as I want both of these. But I probably should have just ditched a Night Howler. Or just not even ditched anything at this point and just swung in for two. But I wanted I wanted the Law of Troll a little bit bigger. And I cast the Gorkland Rampager. See, I think that would have been better the other way around. As Jared would have been a... Th a f well, Jared would have only been a 3-3. Three, three, so maybe not. But then it would Jared would have got a lot bigger with the addition of everything that I chuck in the graveyard to Law of Troll. So Plukronos does come out here. I expected that. And then we have... Another Gore Clan Rampager. So we're drawn into the Gore Clans, which is one of the best cards in the deck. And he does decide to block the Plukronos. But I can just Gore Clan Rampager. So he loses his Plukronos and still takes three. And he goes down to a nine. And I tap my mana wrong there. I probably could have casted a Night Howler any other way. But he can go for another Plukronos, which he does cast, which I know I pretty much got the game here. As I draw into a Shadowborn Demon. But anyway, he's got a block. Again, with the Plukronos. And if he blocks there, then I... I could have... Well, yeah, that's still probably the right play. Because what I could have done is... Bestowed a... A Gorkland Rampager. One, two, three, four, five. Onto a... Or not Haller onto a Gorkland Rampager. And get a 9-9. Nine, nine. And then he'd have to block the 9-9 nine, nine Trampler. Or block the Troll. And then I could have chucked some more in the graveyard. And that would have made that up to an 11-11 plus Trample Damage. Yeah, he would have been so close to being dead either way that I did it. But the Shadow War Demon, of course, was a great draw as it kills his Plukronos. And then he's basically, you know, down to top deck mode. Actually, yeah, I can just ditch two creatures, Lot Latrol, and actually kill him. So, even yeah, even without the Shadow War Demon, being at 9 life, that would have been plenty of life to actually kill him with a Gore Clan Rampager, Night Howlard. Yeah, ditch the last two to the Lot Latrol. Yeah, that would have been that would have been overkill it that way as well. But the Shadow War Demon was just insult to injury, I guess. So pretty good. Again, 3060. 
in the games. Uh, very good players. You can let me know if anyone knows who that second player was, if he's actually a known player or not. I'm not very up to date on you know professional Magic players, especially ones that are out of the country, like from Brazil or or uh, South America or even Europe. So if anyone recognizes that name, definitely let me know. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.